What's new in Washington this week? Hello, I'm Brian Kelly, editor of U.S. News, and this is our look at the latest U.S. News Weekly Digital Magazine. Another week, another assault on business as usual by President Obama. This time he took aim at corporations and wealthy Americans who avoid U.S. taxes by putting their money overseas. Obama says his proposal would bring in $210 billion in extra tax revenue over 10 years. Others aren't so sure. The government's new bank stress tests have revealed that several of America's largest lenders need about $75 billion in additional capital to guard against further losses. More rescue money is the last thing members of Congress or their constituents want to hear. But for now, at least, there's still about $100 billion left in the federal bailout pot. The Obama administration is still finding itself trying to explain last month's Air Force One flyover of New York City. It sent people into the streets panicking about another terrorist attack. It turns out it was just a $329,000 photo op. That's where our chief White House correspondent, Ken Walsh, picks up the story. The goal was to capture images of the plane flying over the Statue of Liberty and other Gotham landmarks. But New Yorkers expressed outrage that they weren't notified of the publicity stunt in advance. As recounted in my book, Air Force One, the irony is that the presidential plane has been part of presidential stagecraft for many years. Mount Rushmore and other sparsely populated sites have been backdrops for Air Force One publicity photos in the past. No one ever made a fuss over these gambits, but flying over New York with its millions of residents and sensitivities over 9-11 was an entirely different story. There's no end to the speculation about who President Obama is going to nominate to replace retiring Supreme Court Justice David Souter. Most shortlist puts Sonia Sotomayor at the top. She's a federal appeals court judge of Puerto Rican descent from the Bronx. He's already got the flowered shirt and likes fine dining and romantic beach strolls with the missus, so maybe the president might think about Florida's Key West instead of Hawaii for his next family vacation. Here's Washington Whispers editor and self-appointed travel advisor Paul Bedard. At the White House, it's still not clear if the Obamas are heading back to Hawaii or not. And that's a good thing for some folks down in Key West, Florida. That's the home of the little White House, the beachfront plantation Harry S. Truman used to vacation at, and home to visits by lots of other presidents right up to Clinton. Foundation Executive Director Bob Walls tells me Obama's been invited and the place is being cleaned up just in case. Already they've spent $1 million in renovations to restore the old facility to its 1940s luster. Paul also puts another name on the list of people who hate Sarah Palin in Hollywood. So download our latest U.S. News Weekly magazine at usnews.com forward slash subscribe. There's also a simpler text-only version. And see you next week.